Hi everybody out there, all my followers, welcome to another one of my videos and this video today is on a 2003 Reno traffic and this van came to me because of the following problem I'm gonna start the engine and there is the problem as you can see we have the service light on and we have the airbag light on okay to uh, to tell us what the problem is I have the DS708 this time so hopefully we'll be able to tell us uh, which uh, airbag is failing uh, to be honest with you I think there's not a lot of airbags that's gonna have to fail because actually even looking at this if I'm not mistaken well there's only one airbag on this one <laughs> there's only this airbag uh, but but let's gonna see what the machine says so yeah there's only one airbag so we can only be the airbag or the pre-tensioner providing there is one on the van as well it looks like there is one it looks like he has a pre-tensioner so it can be one of the two so I'm gonna fill all these details in uh, we're gonna scan the car and see what comes up with okay so we are now in the vehicle uh, let's gonna just go straight to the airbags and see what comes up with Go with codes. Okay, so there is two memory codes and one active code. The active code uh, stands for the front airbag circuit open circuit, uh, and uh, it's gonna go to live date uh, and see what it says in there. But well, obviously, just to confirm what we. What we're saying okay so I'm not sure which line is going to be that one but the line this line usually is these two lines here uh, usually the number one and two is for the driver's airbags so which means one circuit is okay the other circuit there is a little bit high so and the other one is going to probably be for the pretensioner I guess uh, so it can't really tell us a lot unless I go and check exactly which line is what but but obviously the code is a little bit <coughs> Is a little bit self explanatory. Uh, driver's front airbag. So, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take the steering, uh, the steering, I'm gonna take these off and see if there's anything that I can see in here or in the slip ring. Let's gonna see if we find what the problem is. Okay, so the first thing I've done was take this uh, cover off. There's two screws underneath, one here, one on the other side. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to disconnect the plug for the slip ring. Because as you try to remove this, the chances are you're going to set the horn. Uh, but also to uh, to take this off the other side. To give me a little bit more room to to work around here. Okay, so I removed everything. Uh, this plug in the middle is actually just for the airbag. Then I removed this too, just to stop the horn to go around. And um, to remove the airbag, you just uh, press a spring-loaded. You just press this, this spring-loaded sort of, and as you press, you slide it up, and as you can see. Is now coming off. 
So what, what you're gonna press while the airbag is in place is gonna be this plate here. And we're gonna now disconnect the, the airbag and take it out. Okay guys, problem found. Um, so I remove the steering wheel. I remove the steering wheel, obviously not rocket science. Just take that out and uh, and obviously pull it out. And I'm gonna show you what the problem is. So to take this top off, you have three clips. I don't wanna clip in again, but you have three tabs in here. So I have one in there, one in there and one in there. You just push them in one by one and start taking off and this comes off. So inside you have the spiral uh, ribbon cable, ribbon, ribbon cable, and inside <clears throat> well actually okay so where this connecting there so okay Actually, I said problem found, but I'm gonna have to measure this cable from the airbag all the way back and see. Actually, we have a we usually have a, a probe, yeah, we do we have this uh, plates here. This is the is the lanes from the ribbon so we're just gonna measure so we have one two four so this is a single stage airbag uh, and obviously okay let's gonna see if we find where the problem is okay as you've seen the problem was not exactly what I thought uh, at first glance, uh, it looked like it was cracked over there. I'm not saying it's not, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take all these off Oops, we're gonna take all these off and uh, Do this on a bench uh, to remove this uh, There's one screw here on the side, which I, I took you off already So Okay, so you just take this screw out Okay that's it and now you need to force it a bit because there is two tabs right behind at the top if you force it it comes out okay and uh, I'm gonna measure this and uh, Let's see what is wrong with it. Okay, guys. Um, the problem I've narrowed the problem down to the slip ring, uh, and uh, unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to. Um, I'm not going to be able to fix this uh, this slip ring because what happened is uh, um, I really apologize. I can't really show you this on the camera now. I put it all together. I'm a little bit on a rush, but uh, to get these all back on. Um, but um, and this is the old slip ring because I don't have another one. But the person needs the the car back, um, uh, and uh, and is going to come back just to replace the slip ring. But obviously that's a straightforward job. I already show you how to get to it, how to take it off. So there's not uh, nothing uh, to go through on that. Uh, but what I would, what I would like to to do now uh, to finish this video is to show you um, how I've actually uh, narrowed the problem really down to this so obviously as i said i'll be measuring this i measure this and uh, one of the lanes was give me 100 and 130 ohms something like that uh, which is obviously a, a high resistance for a low resistance sorry for a, a circuit Sorry, a high resistance. I'm now getting confused, which is obviously a, a high resistance uh, uh, for a line for an airbag. Uh, you should be looking at the about five ohms, not much more than that. 
measuring uh, with this um, measuring it uh, you know without being connected uh, so yeah so that's uh, that's what I was getting so uh, inspecting the lane the, the the ribbon cable or ribbon I think it's ribbon cable you pronounce it the ribbon cable um, what, what, what I've seen and I've seen this in the past I have this problem in, in the past with the uh, BMWs um, you have those lanes you have those uh, copper lanes uh, they are usually about space like that copper lanes and they are covered in that plastic uh, that makes that strip uh, and sometimes you can see if you look at the copper lanes inside you clean the, the the strip if it's dirty you see like cross lanes a cross mark dark mark that usually means the stress of the obviously the the loop where it loops around the stress it cracked the the copper lane okay that's usually what happens and usually if you if you go with your nail across the top you can feel a kind of uh, a little bump in there or something that that's not right so that that's usually where it cracks um and obviously when it happens close to the joints sometimes you can do something depends on 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 a slippering style this one at the other end i could do something but at this end i couldn't uh, but the but the problem is as well it's broken in the middle uh, give or take so so it doesn't really worth the time you're going to spend uh, try to fix this um, I mean you could do it for learning purpose but uh, not for a repair really um, but what I'm going to show you now is how I actually trace the problem completely down to this and I can show you how you can do it providing you have this facility how you can do it um, to the degree that like, of 99% sure that your problem uh, is going to be uh, on um, on a sleep ring. So I've showed you as well on when I do videos for the DS 708. Some cars you have access to these live data, which I showed you uh, at the beginning of the video. So the line for this airbag here is line number three. Uh, it's showing 11.0, which basically means an open line, uh, pretty much. Uh, the other 11.2 that is showing you also a kind of an open line is probably for an airbag that is not fitted uh, or something like that. I'm not really sure. Uh, I'm sure uh, that uh, the... Oops, sorry about that. I'm sure that uh, the the first one, uh, the, the line one is going to be the pretensioner, the seat belt. The second one, um, I... I, I don't, that, that one's going to be the the the, the seat belt, the the, the pretensioner for the passenger side. Um, the other one, uh, I don't know what that one is because there's no passenger airbag. I'm not really sure, but it's not doing any fault, so it might just be reading an open line, as we can see in there. But um, but the issue is not reporting it because it's not configured on issue. Uh, line three is the driver uh, airbag. Uh, and and four, I believe, is going to be the pretensioner for the um, for the driver side. Obviously, it's the other. It should be the the, the other way around, but because this is a left a uh, Ryan drive or a left a drive, uh, Ryan drive. Sorry, uh, obviously it shows you the, the opposite. But yeah, so that's the line. And the way I know that's the line is because what I'm going to do, and I, that, that's why I've traced it down to this. Is obviously this is the plug for the airbag, and that's the pins. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to short the line. I'm going to short the, the, the two pins. Which means, if the cable is good from here back to this U, that is going to show me uh, close to zero ohms. Because I'm going to short the circuit. So if there's a break on the wire from here to this U, jumping these wires, jumping these two pins, is not going to make a difference. It's going to start continue to read exactly the same. If the wires are good, that's going to detect um, a short. And so we're going to put the wire in there. And look the reading on line 3. 0 0.3 now. So I'm going to take it off while recording. So removed. Back on. Removed. Back on. So, which means the line from here... All the way back to the ECU is good. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug this in. And I'm going to do exactly the same. But back here I'm going to short these 
two lanes in there right after my finger. I'm gonna short this and I wish I had my camera support here, which I don't. Uh, I'm gonna pause and I'm gonna put the wires in there. Okay, I have now the line completely shorted over there, as you can see. And I still have 11.1. I'm gonna short this right here at the top. Come on. Like that. Just in case there's a bad contact in there, so... Oops. Pressing this down with a screwdriver. And you still have... 11.1. So that's how I've traced it completely down. How you can rule out anything else. So... At the moment, uh, I'm quite confident that the problem is going to be this airbag here. I wasn't ready by, by just measuring it, but just another way to show you. When you have this facility, it's quite helpful for you to diagnose um, uh, the lines and the airbag system. Uh, and I think that's it. Um, I really hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, I really do. Uh, I hope there's some really good information. Well, I hope there's some good information here for you to take on. And um, any questions, comments, put them below. And like always, guys, thank you for watching.